thanks for coming. Thank you for joining us on another Ukraine day here in the United States. You know, I say this a lot. It feels like I say this every night now, but today really was nuts. It was, it's hard to imagine that news saying the president of the United States wanted to build a moat filled with alligators and snakes <laughs> to eat families coming over the border would be the second biggest story of the day, but somehow it is that. <laughs> a new book by a couple of writers from the New York Times cites multiple sources in the administration who say Trump wanted a moat, he wanted snakes, he wanted alligators, <laughs> he wanted an electrified wall with spikes on top <laughs> to keep immigrants out. He said, was said to be so frustrated by lack of progress on his stupid wall, at one point he shouted at everyone, he said, I ran on this issue, you guys are making me look like an idiot. And they were like... <laughs> Sorry, Mr. President, tell us more about this moat full of alligators and snakes. <laughs> According to the book, during that same meeting, Trump suggested shooting migrants who crossed the border. And when the people said, oh, no, no, we can't, we can't do that, he said, no, shoot them in the leg to slow them down. <laughs> And then he, he had them run a cost analysis for this plan, for the, the shooting and attack snakes plan. And that should be it, right? That shouldn't that result in everyone being escorted out of the White House and back into the wild? It should, but it, but it hasn't. And the president, of course, denied these allegations this morning. He wrote, now the press is trying to sell the fact that I wanted a moot stuffed with alligators and snakes. <laughs> <laughs> A moot is like a Canadian moat. It's a different... It's, you guys know. His plan... On the southern border, he's building a, a moat, and then at the top, there'll be a moot. <laughs> uh, not only did Trump tweet uh, denial, he yelled at a reporter who asked him about it. So these two reporters wrote this book, and they said, I want a moat with alligator snakes, electrified fences so people get electrocuted if they so much as touch the fence and spikes on top. Never said it, never thought of it, and I actually put out something on social media today. I said, I'm tough on the border, but I'm not that tough. Okay, it was a lie. <laughs> it was a lie. <laughs> he didn't want alligators, he wanted dragons with fire in their mouths. <laughs> like the one the Khaleesi had. This story, by the way, was corroborated by a dozen White House officials who spoke on condition of anonymity, which a dozen... Well, that's like all of them, I think. How many officials could be left? And this idea of moats and alligators, you have to wonder, where the hell would Trump get an idea like this? They're gonna say, we need to quadruple the Border Patrol. Or they'll want a higher fence. Maybe they'll need a moat. <laughs> Maybe they'll want alligators in the moat. Obama and his jokes again have us in a fix. Thanks, Obama. So anyway, <laughs> now we have a new scandal, Gatorgate. And, but as, as horrible that is, as that is, and, and it is horrible, and we must not forget that, the main event in Washington, D.C. right now is impeachment. All the president's henchmen are, are getting in on this. Today we learned that the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, was part of Trump's now infamous call with the president of Ukraine, even though he initially acted like he didn't know anything about it when they asked. Pompeo held a press conference in Italy today where he admitted that, on second thought, he was on the call. So, oops. As for was I on the phone call, I was on the phone call. Uh, the phone call was in the context of, now I guess I've been the Secretary of State for uh, coming on a year and a half. Um, I know precisely what the American policy is with respect to Ukraine. It's been remarkably consistent, uh, and we will continue to try to drive those set of outcomes. I think that means six more weeks of impeachment, so... And this is... I noticed something. Is there's a very distinct pattern when Trump or one of his characters get caught on something. First, they deny it, or they play dumb, and then they say, I did do it, but they act like it was no big deal. And then they say they didn't do it after they said they did it. Pompeo right now is at stage two of that. Give him a couple of days. And <laughs> with all this shrapnel coming at him, the president is absolutely melting down. Today, he continued his attacks on the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff. He called Schiff a lowlife. He repeatedly accused him of treason, which is a word he definitely doesn't know the definition of. <laughs> He floated a theory that Schiff wrote the whistleblower's report for him based on nothing, and he even gave him a new nickname. You know, call him Shifty Schiff. We don't call him Shifty Schiff for nothing. He's a 
shifty, dishonest guy. And this guy was negative on Mike Pompeo. He can't, you know, there's an expression, he couldn't carry his blank strap. I won't say it because they'll say it was so terrible to say. But that guy couldn't carry his blank strap. Do you understand that? I'm not sure I do. Let's go to our experts to find out. Gene? <laughs> dumb Donald is really dumb. <laughs> he got a letter from a politician asking for support. But instead of money, he sent the politician a blank. A jock strap. <laughs> jock strap. <laughs> Can you say John Strap on television? I don't know. Oh, yeah, you can. You can now. Wow. Isn't that something? If you go through all the old seasons of the match game, you can predict all of the future. It's incredible. <laughs> so the shift is hitting the tan, and the president even tweeted a curse word today in all caps. He's not happy. He could use about a million rounds of golf right now. He says this investigation has nothing to do with his perfect call to Ukraine. He says the Democrats have been out to get him since the day he was sworn in. Shifty Shift, uh, who should resign, for, uh, in disgrace, by the way, and Jerry Nadler and all of them. It's a disgrace what's going on. Think of it. You have a perfect, I mean perfect, conversation with a president of another country, Ukraine in this case. And they try and say, oh, let's impeach him. They've been trying to impeach me from the day I got elected. I've been going through this for three years. They've been trying to impeach me from the day I got elected. And guess what? They're about to get their wish. <laughs> Thanks to you. All credit. All credit goes to him. But I have to say, I do think these guys are going about this the wrong right way. The Democrats need to stop using the word impeach. He gets defensive. What they should tell him, they should say, listen, Mr. President, you've done an amazing job. We, you've done such an amazing job. We are sending you right to the Hall of Fame. You will be the first inductee into the President Hall of Fame. Now, we're going to retire your jersey, go get your stuff, we'll have a ceremony, maybe a parade, then just lead him into a hall of some kind and lock him in it. Maybe... <laughs> maybe hand him a trophy and throw a few of those snakes and alligators in there while we're at it. An innocent bystander in all of this today was the President of Finland. This poor guy was unfortunate enough to be standing right next to Trump during his crazy press conference. He was in America today to <laughs> bear witness to our president throwing a televised tantrum, the likes of which, which the Finnish have probably never seen. I've done more, and this administration has done more than any administration in the history of this country in the first two and a half years. Uh, I'm used to it. For me, it's like putting on a suit in the morning. People have said to me, how does he handle it? Rush Limbaugh said, I don't know of any man in America that could handle it. Sean Hannity said the same thing. Others have said the same thing. That's the, uh, that's the Helsinki shuffle. The, the Finnish president even got a chance to see Trump take a shot at the Speaker of the House. It really, Trump saved his best material of the day for Nancy Pelosi. We won the election. And then they get served with subpoenas. All these subpoenas. Now, look at Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi hands out subpoenas like, you know, she has to approve it. She hands out subpoenas like they're cookies. You want a subpoena? Here you go, take them, like they're cookies. Paul Ryan would not give subpoenas. Nancy Pelosi, here you go, take it. Who wants a subpoena? Every day you get subpoenas. Sorry. Now, open your mouth for some more subpoenas, because <laughs> you're the cookie monster. And and if you don't believe the president that this is all a hoax, well, just, just ask his, his good pal, Vladimir. Let me just tell you, the whole thing is a scam. The Mueller deal was a scam. The Russian collusion was a scam. You can ask Putin. Nobody's been rougher on Russia than Donald Trump. <laughs> just, okay? ask, just ask Putin. He'll tell you what's what. He's, he's very open. Putin defended Trump today, as he's been known to do. Putin said, I see nothing compromising in the conversation between Trump and Zelensky. Any head of state would have had to do the same. They've been using any excuse to attack President Trump. Now it's Ukraine. I think that's really sweet that he stands by his man like that. But <laughs> then Putin joked that Russia is planning to interfere in the 2020 election. They asked him, uh, will you be interfering in the election? And an audience of Russia, he said, I'll tell you a secret. Yes, we'll definitely do it. Just don't tell anyone. He loves, <laughs> he loves this so much. He, 
It's like he did it once, he's gonna do it twice. It's like Lucy pulling the football away from Charlie Brown. It's <laughs> only in this ca case, Charlie Brown is Donnie Orange. And we are the <laughs> I don't know what we are. I guess we're the dirt. And as if that all wasn't enough. The inspector general of the State Department called an urgent meeting with members of Congress. He scheduled it yesterday for this morning. No one knew why. All we knew is that it was highly unusual. And after the meeting, Jamie Raskin, who's on the House Oversight Committee, held a strange little chat with the press. And he wanted to give us a packet of information, which is unclassified, uh, which originally arrived at the Department of State addressed to Secretary Pompeo, and it looks like this. So it's in calligraphy. It says, Secretary Pompeo, attention, Ruth, and it says the White House. So it may have come from the White House, it may not. Uh, we don't know. Then there are a series of um, folders which all uh, come from Trump hotels. So folder after folder that say Trump Hotel. Now, I haven't had time to thoroughly scrutinize everything that's in here, but it's essentially a packet of propaganda. Right. So they got a packet of propaganda, which is apparently full of crazy stories about Joe Biden and other people Trump doesn't like. No one knows who put it together, but whoever it was wrote on the front of it in calligraphy to Secretary Pompeo, the White House, and then they put all the propaganda in folders from the Trump Hotel. Now. If this is from someone who's working in support of Donald Trump, that person is an idiot, which, <laughs> considering who we're dealing with here, is entirely, maybe even probable, not just possible. <laughs> Can you imagine they put packets of conspiracy theories in folders that say Trump Hotel on them <laughs> and send it to the State Department? It's so dumb, it almost has to be the president who did that. <laughs> I wonder if any of it was written in Sharpie, because... I am Jimmy Kimmel. Click below to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or if you want to be that way about it, don't.